How's it going, people? My name is Dollywop, and today I'm bringing you my version of the Masters 8 in this Ash Teams Redone verse. If you're not familiar with my version of Ash's teams, I'd give that a watch first, as it contains a lot of context for why Ash has these Pokemon. Today, we're going to be going over every competitor in the Masters 8, their teams, and a little backstory for how all this is going to go down. Before we begin, I'm going to insert this disclaimer about acknowledging the situation that went on during the actual Masters 8 and how this isn't me shitting on them, but just giving my version based on the ATR verse, or Ash Teams Redone verse, for short, or long. ATR sounds kind of neat. Anyways, the biggest change I'm making for this tournament is the style. For the Masters 8, it's not going to be brackets, but a round robin type format. Ash has interacted with all these champions at some point, and if he hasn't, in my world he has, so it's only right he faces them all to prove he's the ultimate Pokemon trainer. As well as that, all three gimmicks are going to be allowed here. I know that limiting it to one makes it appear to make the trainers more tactical, but Ash is pretty much the only one who can use all three. Almost everyone else either knows none of them or only one, so it's a limiter for Ash only, which is kind of BS. Feel free to comment in the comment section your opinion on this, but I think since the three techniques Ash learned took time, training, and skill to learn, it's dumb to prevent it from using full power. Plus, it's not like he can utilize all three in every battle. Not every team will have a Mega, not every Pokemon has experience with Z-moves, and I think if you're a champion, a Z-move shouldn't be a one-hit KO. All that means that Ash still has to be smart about his choices. Now, if you've seen the rest of my videos, you'll know that I originally made a Masters 8 team for Ash that had all his aces from the regions. I was going to have Ash go around, use all his Pokemon from the previous region throughout the tournament, and conclude it by using his strongest Pokemon to beat Leon. However, I did actually make a Journeys team for him, which I posted later. I left it kind of ambiguous if Ash would use them, but today I'm here to say, he will. Yeah, I fell in love with the team I gave Ash here. All of them are so cool and have so much potential that I'd hate to just not use them. What does this mean for the story, though? In summary, the story of Journeys will be Ash meeting Leon and discovering the World Coronation series. He finds out Leon is the current strongest champion, even beating out Cynthia. Ash can go back and look at battles from the last season and see their match, where Leon's ace, Mr. Rhyme, was just able to beat Cynthia's Garchomp, netting him the win. Leon also also knows all about Ash. Seeing as he's the new Alola champion, Leon expects to see him in the tournament, including the final eight to compete. He's got a lot of confidence in him because Leon himself has gone back and researched Ash's Pokemon career, giving him insight on Ash and his teams. I mean, if you are the best, one of the ways you stay the best is you look at your competition. Ash is determined and declares he'll meet him in the finals. Despite his confidence, Ash is aware of something. While he'll be competing and has plenty of Pokemon, Leon is shown to be an amazing battler, probably the best Ash has seen. While Ash is climbing the ranks to reach the tournament, Leon will have the entire season to prepare for his opponents, including every Pokemon Ash could throw at him. Taking the skills and raising and bonding with Pokemon that he learned at Alola, he knows that can lead him to victory. While using all of his Pokemon to compete, Ash is slowly going to work on building a new team, one Leon won't see coming and one that has the fire in them to be the best. Okay, that's the base story idea. It combines both aspects where you have Ash utilizing his Pokemon to fight in the World Coronation series, but also still have him use his unique Journeys team. Note, I'm not trying to imply here that Ash thinks his old Pokemon are weak and can't hack it against Leon. It's more he's treating this like entering a new region where he'll be catching new Pokemon and solely using them to take on the League. In this case, that region is everywhere, and that League is Leon. For how I've done the team, since Ash is going to fight them all, I'll be going over his opponents in the order he'd face them, showing off their teams, and showing off the team that Ash would use to beat them. If I'm not going to have Ash use his aces to beat Leon, on, each one will be a key player for a team that beats his champion level opponents. Now on to the actual video. Starting off, we have Iris. Her team is Haxorus, Drudigan, Hydreigon, Archaeops, Agron, and Dracozolt. If you've seen my companion's video, this team is basically the same as the one I have, only I didn't give her a Garchomp and switched it for Dracozolt. There is overlap in some of the champion's Pokemon, which is fine, but I didn't want to overlap if a certain Pokemon is another's ace. Cynthia's got Garchomp, so Iris won't be using it. The only exception to this rule is Ash, only because he has a limited number of Pokemon. So instead of Garchomp, we have Dracozolt, which I think is much more interesting, and it's a Pokemon Ash wouldn't expect, giving Iris an edge. Ash's team to fighter will be Escavalier, Slurpuff, Whimsicott, Quagsire, Caracosta, and Pyro. Roar. It's only fitting that Ash's Unova Ace faces off against the Unova Champion. Ash is also smart, so using his two Fairy Pokemon to face Iris's mostly Dragon Team is key. Quagsire and Caracosta are also tanky, and Pyro provides some firepower. Also, on a fun note, whoever they're facing on the screen currently is who would have them fight in the match. Haxorus vs. Escavalier, Drudigan vs. Slurpuff, Hydreigon vs. Whimsicott, etc. I'm putting it out now so I don't have to say the matchups for every person. This video is already long as it is, and I just I don't need to announce that every five seconds. Next fight, we have Ash vs. Lance. Lance's team is Dragonite, Shiny Gyarados, Aerodactyl, Charizard, Feraligator, and Sceptile. Okay, so Lance's team may look weird, but I got reasoning. With both Iris and Lance, we have two Dragon Trainers, so that kind of limits my options for both. I wanted to stick true to Lance and try not to double up on Pokemon. I've always seen Lance while being a Dragon Trainer is a master of Draconic Pokemon in nature. That's why he has Charizard, Gyarados, and Aerodactyl. They're not Dragon-type, but they're very Draconic Pokemon in nature and design. 
Sceptile and Feraligator also fit this bill. Both learn a myriad of dragon moves, and Sceptile's Mega Evolution is a dragon type. Plus, it gives Lance a nice starter core trio of fire, water, and grass dragon like Pokemon. Plus, plus, Feraligator is from Johto, which Lance is the champion of, so I think it makes sense. Ash's team to fight Lance will be Espeon, Rhyperior, Salamence, Darmanitan, Stoutland, and Mega Beedrill. I'm sorry, huh? Okay, when constructing these teams, I realized I had enough slots to fill where I could make it so every one of Ash's Pokemon is used here to fight a champion. The only problem is that I was missing two Pokemon, which was fine. I could insert Pikachu on both teams and be done. However, I remembered something important. Despite the fact that he's only caught the Pokemon shown in my videos, Ash has technically caught two other Pokemon. I may have changed the teams in certain battles, but the overall story has remained the same, which means Ash's first catch was a Weedle that evolved into a Beedrill before being released, and a Lapras that got caught in the Orange Islands. And wouldn't it be cool if both came back to fight in the tournament? And because Beedrill's a Beedrill, I thought Mega Evolving him would be awesome. He already has a strong bond with Ash, so this would be something he was working on in secret while competing in the World Coronation series. We'll have this moment in the episode where Ash sends out Beedrill, and everyone's super shocked, and we flash back to him reuniting with Beedrill and learning Mega Evolution with him. It's not 100% great writing-wise, but I'm doing it because it's awesome. Anyways, as for the rest, I've made the ultimate decision that Espeon would be his Johto ace, meaning she leads the team for Lance. Rhyperior is my Snorlax equivalent and almost an ace in his own right, so he's backing her up. Facing THE Dragon Master, you know Ash has to use his strongest dragon against him in Salamence. Darmanitan and Stoutland are both physically powerful Pokemon, which will help match blows against Lance's own brute force. Next up, we have Wallace. Ha! <laughs> yeah, that's right, Alon's gone, bitches. Time for a real trainer to compete in this tournament. Okay, joking aside, I didn't actually remove Lalan because I disliked him. I mean, it helped with my reasoning and brought eternal joy to my life as one more fuck you to that guy, but it wasn't the sole reason. Alan has always felt out of place in the tournament, especially if Ash wasn't going to battle him. Like, we have a champion in Alder and Wallace just sitting there. I mean, if we're being technical, Wallace would be the champion after Steven since he replaced him in Emerald, though we are following Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire logic, so that might not hold up. I always thought Wallace was an amazing trainer, and we could get a proper fight out of him, rather than that weird off-screen battle he and Ash had for a badge that Ash already obtained. Anyways, Wallace's team is Milotic, Ludicolo, Swampert, Walrein, Pelipper, and Kabutops. Pelipper is here because I think with how the battlefield is, Wallace would run a rain team. Since it's all dirt, you don't really have water pools for him to throw his more aquatic Pokemon in. Pelipper would bring the rain, which all of his Pokemon would benefit from. Swampert we've seen him use for a second, but why wouldn't he have a starter from his region? The real newest member is Kabutops. I know Steven's still champion as we're following Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire game standings, but if slash when Wallace becomes champion, I'd imagine Steven would gift him this fossil Pokemon as a congratulations on his position. Maybe in this tournament, this is where we figure out Steven's retiring and Wallace is taking over. In this world, it could be that Steven gave it to Wallace after he became the gym leader of Sutopolis or became a master contest star. Either way, I like the idea of Steven giving it to him as a Kabuto. Plus, Kabutops is a monster on rain teams. Swift Swim plus Blade Arms and Anime Logic? That equals a badass battle. Which is why Ash will need a badass team to go up against this star performer. Ash will be using Mega Swampert, Tangrowth, Gastrodon, Sableye, Driftblim, and Farfetch'd. I kept Mega Swampert from my original video, and he's gonna be facing off against Bilotic. I know Steven's technically the Hoenn champion, so he should use his Hoenn Ace to fight him, but come on! How perfect would it be for Ash to use Wallace's own rain tactics against him with his Swift Swim Mega Swampert? That's a badass strategy! Gastrodon was a great choice as well for its Storm Drain ability. Farfetch would have access to Leaf Blade at this point, and Driftblim could do Thunderbolt. Sableye is a wild card to throw anything Wallace could throw at him off. Wallace fights like a contest performance, so that means he has fantastic control over his techniques. They're as strong as they are deadly and beautiful, so a disruptor like Sableye would be great to use. If you're trying to picture it, I imagine him fighting almost like Tucker with the fusion of fire and water. Wallace obviously wouldn't have access to that technique, but you get what I mean, where it's like combining techniques together to create even stronger moves. Moving along, we're on to Steven. Okay, his team is mostly unchanged. We have Mega Metagross, Agron, Skarmory, Cradilly, Armaldo, and Empoleon. I think Steven's team is great. I love his Claydol as well, but I wanted an additional Steel type for him. Originally, I had Steelix, but then I thought Empoleon would actually be a great surprise for him to throw in. Owen is mostly water, so having a water type to surf around on would be useful. I think Steven would obtain Empoleon to help counter his biggest weakness in fire types. I mean, technically only two of his current teammates are weak to fire, but fire is a heavy hitting type in general. Having Empoleon to counter that would be great. Also, it could be a gift from Wallace sort of a gift exchange for becoming champion. Piplup is a great contest Pokemon that I could see Wallace procuring and using as a gift. It's not the cleanest idea, but I think 
the idea of the two Hoenn champions gifting each other a Pokemon that fits their themes while also being a reflection of the gift giver is great. To take down Steven, we've got Palosan, Mars Shadow, Clodsir, Houndoom, Camerupt, and Lapras. This is why I gave Mega Swampert to fight Wallace. With Ash being the Alola champion, Palosan doesn't really have a mirror match to fight. Being a ground and ghost type, Ash would definitely use him as the perfect counter to Mega Metagross's steel and psychic powers. Mars Shadow being a brutal fighting type would be great against a mostly rock and steel type Pokemon Steven uses. I love the idea of Clodsir chasing Skarmory through the air using Aqua Jet and Houndoom ripping through Cradley's vines to attack is a great visual as well. Camerupt is another logic-based choice due to its typing, but I do have it fight Armaldo. That way it's sort of not a, oh, he has the perfect counter to him because Armaldo can also use water moves, so it's kind of evenly matched. Lastly on the team, we have Lapras making its appearance. I don't have a direct reason for it facing Steven as it's sort of a last minute choice. Again, when I picked it in Beedrill, they were the fill the slot people. I do think it'd be a great fight, especially against Empoleon. Ash could also have a Gigantamax and set up a Roar Veil. I didn't explicitly make this Lapras Gigantamax, but why not? I give Mega to Beedrill, so we're pilling to the crowd here. We're on to the final three fights. Dianth is up and her team is Mega Gardevoir, Diancy, Gudra, Noivern, Gorgeist, and Pangoro. Gee dolly, for a guy who rants about hating trainers using legendaries, you sure give a lot of people legendaries. Okay, I get it. I'm a hypocrite. I admit it. However, some legendaries are okay for trainers to use. Ones that don't have ties to the natural world or some element of it. Diancie is just a mutated carbink and is their queen. Diancie is awesome, and I love its mega evolution. I'm just saying it's no god of earth and sea or creator of all things. It's legendary, but it feels like it's due more to its rarity and reaching that bare minimum power threshold than, say, having something tying it to the world like Celebi or something. I do stand by that there should only be one of every legendary slash mythical, excluding certain ones that make sense. But none of this baby Lukia nonsense. I'm getting off topic. So yeah, Diancie being the royal pink princess makes sense for the Queen of Kalos to use. I thought about just giving her a Carbink, but if I'm going to give a legendary someone, it will be a champion level fighter and not some rando. Plus, Carbink just does not have the presence a Diancie does, and if I'm going to make Diantha Ash's third toughest fight in the league, you gotta give her some power. If anything, I think Diancie is a temporary teammate. It comes and goes as it pleases, but we'll battle with Diantha on occasion. Similar to when Kukui got to use Tapu Koko. Moving along, Gudra and Gorgeist are solid so they stay. Pangora was actually taken from Zaktoshi's video where he put one on Diantha's team to act as her bodyguard while she's out. I love the idea of that bodyguard thing, but I couldn't find a better Pokemon than Pangoro for the role. It also acts as a great counter to the steel types that were effective against Gardevoir and Diancie. Now, Noiverns are said to be extremely vicious Pokemon. I wanted it here to represent that about Diantha's team. While they appear on the weaker side, each are actually monsters in battle. We saw in the original Masters 8 tournament how Diantha fought Lance and proved her strength. I mean, no one thought Diantha was going to beat Lance. No one thought Diantha was going to make it anywhere. Everyone probably ranked her just above Iris in terms of where she would stand. So I think giving her the secret weapon of a Noivern is a great idea to show off she's not a pushover. There's a reason I have her third here. It came down to her or Steven, and I think she's the more interesting choice to have here. Plus, you guys know Ash Chestnut is coming back to fight Diantha, and he's a headliner. Speaking of that, Ash's team is Ash Chestnut, Kartana, Salazzle, Rampardos, Araquanid, and Breloom. Ash Chestnut is of course here. Cortana is a powerful Ultra V Steel type, perfect to use against a champion with fairy types. Same goes for the Toxic Salazzle. Rimpardos is pure power to help back up the less tanky members of this team. Araquanid would be a tricky fighter with its use of bubbles and webbing. I'd love to see it fight Gorgeist, who can actually use fire attacks. Lastly, I went back and forth on this, but decided Braylon would be the battle crazy fighter to go blow to blow with Pangoro. Hitmontop was a neck and neck, but ultimately I had a better fight for him. On that note, the next fight is actually versus Cynthia. Her team is Garchomp, Spiritomb, Togekiss, Hippowdon, Lucario, and Glaceon. Okay, it's mostly unchanged. Cynthia's team is part of what she's known for, so any changes I did make, I wanted to make sure it didn't lessen her team in power. There's also worth that many changes I wanted to make. I considered substituting Spiritomb out for Dust War, but I had a Sinnoh Trainer in another video that I really wanted to use it for, and it was important enough on that person's team that I didn't want to double up here. Spiritomb is also just really unique for her team. It will also remind Ash of the time he fought Tobias and beat his ass. You may notice we lost our Gastrodon Rose Raid and Milotic. I know I had other options for her, so I wasn't too broken up about it. Ash has a Gastron, so I didn't want to double up here if I could. Since I put Wallace in the tournament, his ace is Milotic, so Scythia having one broke my rule of no one else having someone else's ace as a Pokemon. Togekiss was great on Scythia's team, so it stays. She's shown to have a Glaceon, and I think it's a strong fighter with moves like Freeze Dry. Lucario is sort of a staple on powerful teams, and Scythia can have one since Ash doesn't have one this time around. The odd man out is Hippowdon. Now, I replaced Rose Raid with it for a couple of reasons. The biggest one is its ability. Hippowdon being 
able to set up a sandstorm as a tactical choice Cynthia would make to use in tandem with Garchomp. Garchomp doesn't need the help, but giving it an evasion buff with Sand Veil and then a power buff in Sand Force when it mega evolves, those would help make or break a battle. Also, I think it's a Pokemon Cynthia has incorporated after losing to Leon last time. Mr. Rhyme had full control of the battlefield in that fight, so Hippowdon is a way to take that back and boost Garchomp to overcome that silly monster of a Pokemon. Speaking of monsters, Ash's team is Magmortar, Rose Raid, Meowstic, Miss Magius, Hitmontop, and Golduck. Magmortar was the ace of Sinnoh, with Rose Raid being the next runner up, so both are here to take on the champion. Another reason I got rid of Rose Raid for Cynthia is I knew Ash would be using his. In a different battle, it wouldn't matter, like with Gastrodon, but not for the match against each other. All the matchups are fine. I think the one I was looking forward to the most is Hitmontop versus Lucario. Two fighters duking out with their fist is always a great battle. Also, if you notice, this team has the most original team members on it from the early series. I consider them to be Ash's strongest behind aces, so bringing powerful fighters like Golduck, Hitmontop, and Miss Magius back to back up Magmortar makes sense to me. If I didn't create the story I did for Rose Raid in the Rivals video, it would have been replaced by Tangrowth here. Lastly, we have the final showdown, Ash vs. Leon. Huh, kind of a moot point to end on. I just did the Rivals video and Leon was on there, so you kind of know what I gave him. Well, I stated it before in that video, but while I did make two teams with Leon, I like his ace being Mr. Rhyme in my world. It's funny, he's badass, and he's a galler gentleman. Dapper as fuck, also fuck you Charizard. So that means Leon's team will be Mr. Rhyme, Surf Fetched, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Rillaboom, Dragabolt, and surprisingly Runa Regis. Runa Regis was a Pokemon I toyed with before liking the Berserker idea, but I switched it back. I think its ability in Watering Spirit would make the match a challenging one so it could switch abilities with any of Ash's Pokemon. Plus it fits my theme for Leon's team of an Ode de Galar, better than Berserker with an Ancient Wall mural look. Also it fits its opponent better, those opponents being Pikachu, Phalanx, Mega Gallade, Inteleon, Tyranitar, and Volcarona. I didn't realize how perfect these matches were mirrored up until I wrote this out. You have the Aces and Pikachu and Mr. Rhyme fighting it out. Phalanx and Surfetch each represent a different style of combat and fighting. You have a legendary fighter in Urshifu going against the pinnacle of what a normal Pokemon can achieve in Mega Gallade. Rillaboom and Inteleon are both starters who can Gigantamax here. Dragapult and Tyranitar are both Suedos for their respective regions. And Ruina Regis and Volcarona both hold a deep connection to Ancient Ruins. With those matchups, it would be a battle for the ages. Those are the matchups in the teams. I hope you all enjoyed them. I found them interesting enough. I didn't go extreme on a lot of the teams, but they didn't really need it. I like adding the little things like Sandstream for Cynthia or the three Draconic starters for Lance. Wallace was probably the biggest change other than Ash using all his Pokemon here. The main draw was seeing who Ash would fight it out with, and I think it turned out wonderfully. If you guys enjoyed the video, give it a like, subscribe, follow me for updates on Twitter, and I'll see you all next time.